Good to have you, Commander. In this mission, we'll be reminding you all about constructing a base for each of the factions. We'll start with the Allies, for obvious reasons. First things first, though. On the right side of the screen is the sidebar, which is where you manage all your base construction and unit production. Here we have one of the hated Allied mobile construction vehicles. The MCV will unpack into a construction yard. To unpack it, select it, then click on its special ability button at the bottom right of your screen. Go on, don't be shy. Observe the ghosted image of the construction yard attached to your cursor. Now left-click anywhere on open terrain to open your MCV to unpack at that location. Very fancy, no? Best remember to use the F hotkey as a shortcut to your unit's special abilities. In general, special abilities are executed with the left mouse button, or cancelled with the right mouse button. However, the right mouse button is used for basic orders. Bear in mind that there may be impassable areas of the map where you're not allowed to place down your structures. When you try to place a structure down over impassable or unbuildable terrain, red cells will appear on the build grid indicating that you're unable to place a structure there. Now that your MCV has unpacked into a construction yard, you should have some new construction options available to you. To access your production structure's build queue, select the con yard, or click on the production tab that's flashing. Whoa, look at what we have here. Looks like you have access to build a power plant. Ow! Don't overdo it. Commander, select the power plant button to begin building it. All allied structures build over time inside the construction yard. Once they're ready, you'll be able to place them on the battlefield right away. Your power plant is now ready to be placed. Simply left-click on its button and move your mouse over open terrain. Then left-click on an open spot on the terrain. That's the way. As the name suggests, a power plant provides your base with power. All your structures, with the exception of your power plant and construction yard, use power. You can tell how much power you've got to spare by glancing at the power meter next to your radar. It's important to understand the consequences of a low power situation. While in low power, your units and structures will build at a reduced speed, and your base defenses won't work. So it's always good to have plenty of power as you build up. The next thing you'll need to get base humming along is an ore refinery. This structure comes with a free prospector vehicle, which will collect ore from that nearby ore mine. To build your ore refinery, select the production tab and select the ore refinery button, just as you did with the power plant. Bear in mind that a single ore refinery likely will not be enough to fund your military escapades. Try to build an ore refinery next to each ore mine near your base, but be careful to defend them. Now that construction is complete, click the ore refinery button and consider where to place it on the battlefield. While you're able to place your refinery anywhere on open terrain, the optimal location is just in front of an ore mine. You'll see those spots ghosted on the terrain. As you move your cursor over those spots, your structure preview should snap to the optimal position. Then, just click to place your ore refinery, and you're set. Hi. Properly executed. When you place your ore refinery, you get a prospector as part of the deal. And he'll go about collecting ore for you automatically. Pro tip, friend. If by some freak accident one of your prospectors or ore collectors is destroyed, you can always build another from your ore refineries. Just select the ore refinery and you'll see it can build another resource vehicle as its special ability. As long as your ore refinery is close to a mine, you only need one vehicle gathering from it. So don't waste credits making more of those little tykes than you need. I always wonder though, how come the mightiest nations in the world need to collect ore while killing each other? I mean, what is even in that stuff? Ow! Don't ask ridiculous questions! Ore is the primary resource in Red Alert 3. Refinery is automatically converted to credits, which is the currency used to purchase all units and structures. All mines have a finite amount of resources that will eventually slow to trickle. So, if you deplete an ore mine, it's best to try and expand to another in order to maintain a steady income. You now have power and an economy set up. You're ready to start training units for the fight. From your production tab, 
Go ahead and build a boot camp. Remember to place it down by selecting its icon, then left-clicking on Open Terrain. Incidentally, you can rotate the face of a structure you're about to plop down by holding down the left mouse button and moving the mouse around. Let go of the button when ready. Now that you have a boot camp, you're able to train some infantry. To do this, you may select either your boot camp or the infantry tab under your radar. This will bring up the available units you're able to train. Let's train some so-called peacekeepers. Select the peacekeeper button to start training one. You may queue up multiple peacekeepers by continuing to select on his portrait. Try holding the shift key to queue up five of those blokes at a time. You can also hold the production of units or structures by right-clicking on a production button. Right-clicking a second time will cancel production and refund any credits that were spent. Left-clicking on a paused production process will resume production. You can set a different rally point for them by selecting the structure and right-clicking some other place. All three factions produce units in the same way, from the respective tabs in the sidebar. By the by, many of your structures aren't restricted to being built on land. You can set them up on water as well. If you build another power plant, try placing it out in the drink. It doesn't cost you any extra, and most ground units won't be able to get to it that way. Observe, however, that allied structures may only be built in the radius surrounding the construction yard. You may expand your build radius by creating command hubs, which convert from your prospectors. Please select your prospector and use its special ability to unpack it somewhere. Across the water, perhaps. Go ahead, Commander. Collecting ore is all right. How's your day, sir? Now, why didn't I think of that? Let's have a look around. I didn't think of that. Be there in a jiffy. How's your day, sir? Stay for a drive. Cannot deploy here. Let's have a look around. I didn't think of that. Objective complete. Yeah, that's it. Also, bear in mind that the Allies' technology level is local to their construction yards or command hubs. That means not all your production structures on the battlefield may offer you the same construction options. You can upgrade your construction yard or your command hub by clicking the Heighten Clearance button with one of these structures selected. Try requesting Heighten Clearance on both your con yard and your command hub now. That's it. Now the other. Construction options. Upgrade complete. Objective complete. There it is. Heightened clearance costs you. And there's an even higher clearance level available after that. You need to decide when and where to request better tech when commanding the Allies. Else things may turn rotten. Yes. Also, should you ever have need to run away like a little girl, you may pack up your conyard, then unpack it on the water. The boot camp and armor facility are the only allied structures you may not place on the water. Your seaport, on the other hand, is the only structure you may not build on land. Ow! What was that for? Silence! Surely the commander wants to move on to the other factions by now. Feel free to continue dabbling with the Allies, then select me when you are ready to continue. Need someone to take a look around? Ready, sir. Where's the trouble?
This monstrosity is the Soviet construction yard. You will see that the Soviets build differently from the Allies. Select the construction yard or the production tab, then select the reactor button. Now place the reactor on open terrain as you did with the Allied structures. Do not wait for the reactor to build in the queue, for you would wait forever. Unlike the Allies, the Soviets carelessly build their structures out on the battlefield. Notice how the structure is hastily being thrown together in a field. While it's building up, it's vulnerable to enemy attack. So be cautious when placing your structures. All Soviet structures build up in this way. Just like the Allies, however, you can pause and cancel a structure's build up by right clicking on its button. And of course, your Soviet structures may be placed at sea, with the exceptions of the barracks and war factory. Uh, Oi, aren't you forgetting something? Yet. At least, not anymore. Commander, one truly unique Soviet structure you should be aware of is the Crusher Crane. Try building one now from your production structures queue. Crusher cranes work much like construction yards. So now, you can build two structures at once from your two separate build queues. What's more, your crane's repair drones will automatically repair nearby vehicles. Or you can order these vehicles into its grinders to crush them for a quick refund. To access your newly added build queues, select the buttons added to the sidebar. Or, click the tabs in the sidebar to cycle between queues. You can build multiple production structures to gain more build queues, allowing you to build more stuff at once. Of course, you'll need plenty of income to support this. Now, please feel free to continue exploring the richness of the Soviet build system. When you're done, please select the tsunami tank to proceed. Objective complete. Building. Building. Construction complete. Building. Construction complete. Construction complete. Construction complete. New construction Ready for options. the collection. Construction complete. Construction Ready complete. For the collection. Low power. Building. 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 Construction complete. Construction complete. At last! Let us continue, Commander, for this will be worth it. The Empire of the Rising Sun has the most unique build system in that our structures are all created from special units called nanocores. Cores may unfurl at the location of your choosing, much like an MCV unpacks into a construction yard. However, unfurled Imperial structures cannot pack back up. Go into your production structures queue and build a generator core. The generator core will be yours to control as soon as it emerges from your construction yard. If you select it, you may give it move commands around the map like any unit. To unfurl it into an instant generator while having it selected, use its unfurled special ability, much like you did with the MCV earlier in this lesson. You should now have a ghosted image of the instant generator attached to your cursor. Select a spot on open terrain to make your generator core unfurl at that location. All nano core are amphibious, so they can cross land as well as water. This means the Empire of the Rising Sun can spread its borders far and wide. The Imperial Docks is the only structure that cannot unfurl on land, while the Mecha Bay and Instant Dojo cannot unfurl at sea. One last thing about Imperial production structures. They must be upgraded individually to unlock new construction options. You'll find these upgrades in their build queues. Now, Commander. Do you see how superior our production capability is compared with that of my barbaric friends here? I still think ours is better. Oh no. Ow! Ow! <laughs> Keep fussing with the Imperial build system if you want. And when you're all set, select me and we'll wrap up. Generator core ready. 
building. Generator core. Unpack location. Binary core. Ready. Refinery core. Site designated. Building. Refinery core. Ready. Set for core. Construction Unpack. complete. Construction complete. New construction I'll options. The goods. Construction complete. I'll collect the goods. Well, that concludes the lesson on base building. Don't worry, the other ones will be shorter. Mostly. Let's shove off, lads. Commander, see you then. Ow! Oh!